Hey everybody, welcome back to another full self-driving video. My name is John and I live in the suburbs of Chicago where I love to document the progress of Tesla's full self-driving software. I wanted to talk about a topic here today that is near and dear to my heart and that is the current state of full self-driving with Hardware 3. There is a good percentage of owners right now that are having a very bad experience with Hardware 3. There is another percentage that is having a great experience. I fall in the great experience. I'm not having any issues. The car has never driven better and I use it every single day. 99.9% .9 of the time when I get in my car, I turn it on with FSD enabled. However, there is a large percentage of people that are having all sorts of issues. This includes speed issues where it drives half the speed that it should. Again, it's 45 mile an hour speed limit and we're doing 25. Speed control has been absolutely abysmal. This includes lane centering issues where it actually hugs the center line too much, making it kind of dangerous. And now I'm all the way to the left. See, I'm like on the lane marking or this close to the lane marking on the left. So this problem continues in 12.6.4. There's also issues where it makes lane changes way too late. And then there's also issues where it will try to run through a red light. It'll be stopped completely at an intersection and then start to go before it, it should be going. If you are an owner that is experiencing these issues on a regular basis, it can be very frustrating to the point where you probably don't even want to use it anymore. And I can understand how you may be feeling abandoned or left behind by Tesla. Tesla released their spring update, and this included a couple minor things for older Tesla owners. But if you are an older Tesla owner, the answer to getting these latest and greatest features is not always going out and buying a new Tesla. And that continues to be a theme. Uh, Tesla Joy re released a video where she was mentioning how she feels abandoned and her thumbnail graphic made me so sad to see. She looked so disappointed. I mean, it looked like she was going to cry in her thumbnail. And I couldn't help but thinking to myself, oh, you are so spoiled, you have no idea. <laughs> like, even though she's having a bad experience with FSD, she's still driving one of the best cars on the roads, even though it's six and a half years old, seven years old. So my car is six and a half years old, and I still feel like it's day one. I absolutely love my car. I wash it all the time. It's I keep it very clean. It hardly has any scratches or dents or anything on it. And I love the software updates. And like I said, FSD works so well for me. But then you have people like Joy that are having a much worse experience. And you can't dismiss those owners. And what it really comes down to is a bug with Hardware 3. And Tesla has not been able to figure out how to fix it. It likely involves a firmware upgrade. And this is like a lower level than the OS. So like a firmware is actually ripping out the internal workings of the computer and then overwriting it. But it's just not that easy to do. And it's also, it can be in certain situations quite risky to do that. So I can understand why Tesla may not have an immediate answer for these owners, but to ignore them, that's another story. And I feel that Tesla is in some ways doing that. Their communication to hardware three owners is not the greatest and it hasn't been for a while. And I can understand these owners feeling isolated and in some ways abandoned. So that is a legitimate feeling. But again, I'm gonna come back to the feeling of being spoiled with everything else. These cars have a minimalistic interior. They're still very unique in the market. They have great acceleration. They have games and entertainment inside of them. You can add accessories and mods that make it feel even newer than it really is. There's so much to be thankful for with a Tesla car. It's funny because I went on a vacation last year with my family down to Texas and we uh, rented a Kia Carnival. It was like a minivan. 
and it had some lane assist and lane keep and smart smart drive features and I was excited to see where they because it was a it was a 2024 car it was a brand new car so I thought okay wow let's see what they've got you know this is five years newer than my model three and to be honest nothing was great at all um, I mean autopilot in and of itself was way better than what this carnival had and I was like seriously like even the slightest turn it would lose its lane and I was like whoa like, and then it wouldn't slow down sometimes so and it obviously couldn't see and process stop signs so uh, we, we do have to be very thankful for what we have especially if we live in the United States for Tesla owners that bought FSD overseas I really feel for you because you have not been able to use it but at the same time it's not really Tesla's fault it's really due to regulations and laws and restrictions in your country and I think when you purchased it there was a fine print very specifically mentioning that that it was pending regulations in your area so you knew that taking it on and that's why I don't think there's been as much noise as as i would have thought there'd be with people complaining over in those countries because they knew that it's due to the country and not tesla anyway with all of that said i think it's important to be very patient with tesla because elon mentioned and again i hate to say this is all on elon but elon has been driving innovation at tesla for so long and he's the one that pushes the envelope we wouldn't be where we are today if it weren't for elon so you, even though you can't trust his timelines you have to trust his intuition and he has doubled down again and again on the fact that these will be self-driving cars you will be able to sleep inside of your car in the future and he says all teslas will be able to do this he's never clarified specifically about hardware 3 but I know reading between the lines that he does include hardware three in the mix. It would be foolish not to do that. So what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna require a hardware upgrade and he has come to the realization that that will be necessary in order to achieve a safety level that is necessary for unsupervised FSD. And that means responding very quickly. In certain cases, that means being able to have higher resolution cameras, for example, although he hasn't specifically come out and said that, but certainly the, the timing with things and the memory. The memory is the big one. It just cannot support as many parameters to achieve the same level of safety. The more parameters you have in a neural net, the more responsive you are, the more cases you can account for. So uh, you're going to be able to account for many many more areas and situations on the roads when you have more parameters so that's just a given that hardware 3 is is going to need a replacement so what is it going to be replaced with well a lot of people speculating that it will be hardware 4 but hardware 4 doesn't have the same form factor so it's likely it will be hardware 4.5 or ai5 or a watered down version of ai5 it all depends on the costs. But even Tesla doesn't know what's necessary to achieve this yet. I think they're getting closer, and in June, with the launch of RoboTaxi, and it's hinted that that could actually be AI5 running inside of these Model Ys in Austin, Texas, where they're able to drive around without a driver in the driver's seat. But if you imagine in the future that situation where with a flip of a switch, we can all go in and upgrade our cars, the value of our cars is going to double or triple overnight. And the reason why is not, not only because it can drive itself, but because you can make a lot of money with your car. And these are older cars too. So it, it, the fear factor of someone vandalizing or destroying your car isn't as great as it would be if it was a brand new car. But still that value is gonna go up tremendously. And I absolutely can't wait for that day. And I truly believe it is coming. Uh, when, that, when that software and hardware gets upgraded, it's going to be a very, very awesome moment in history. So that is something to look forward to. But I, I, would, I would caution everybody that is maybe in the camp of, hey, my, my software's not working, to just have faith and to be patient. Because I truly believe that Tesla will do the right thing. 
they will come out and fix our cars as they are now, or they'll come out with a game plan and a roadmap to allow us to feel a little bit at ease with what's, what's coming down the road. Let me know down in the comments where you guys are at. If you're having a bad experience, if you're having a good experience, are you confident in Tesla? Do you feel like you're going to get what you promised? Where's your mind at with FSD, if you're a Hardware 3 owner especially? Uh, some owners are like, you know what, I, I already upgraded and I have a new car anyway, so I don't really care. I've got a Hardware 3 and a Hardware 4, and probably when, I, when Hardware 5 comes out, I'll get one of those as well. Well, congratulations, you, are, you have the luxury to be able to do that. Uh, a, a lot of other people cannot do that. They can't just go out and buy another car. The vast majority of Americans cannot afford to buy new cars every four to five years. It's more like a 10, 15 year cycle. So that's not always the, the right answer. So I think really what it comes down to is being patient and having faith. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.